I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage and we're having our monthly tech meet and we're going to be taking apart a Turbo 400 uh, hydromatic transmission. Okay, I'll keep that over there. This is not a very sanitary setup, but it still has to be cleaned and assembled. So that's our piston, most of it. Um, there's a little e This E clip is really hard to access before it's broken because this is spring loaded and comes up. So, what I will do is take some C clamp type vice grips and compress it so it's down so that you can slide it out of there. That's that. I'll get this gasket out of the way. So, there's one valve. It's called a manual valve. It's this one. This is the one that connects to the gear shift selector. That slides right out. It's important when you put it back together, you re-engage it because you can put it all back together and start it up and it's not going to go anywhere. So I've done that too. That's where experience is gained by making mistakes. Now there's a diagram in the shop manual that describes what all these valves do. I don't have that out today. I'm just going to pull them apart and show you what they look like. And they design it so most of the pins come in from the side that's up against that sandwich plate. So they're not going to come out. I think there is one that is a split pin, which is driven in, that can come out from the other side. When you pull these things out, always cover the hole in case it comes flying out in a hurry. Are those finishing nails also? No. Nope. Those are just little dowels. Exactly. A lot of times little burrs will hold these so they don't want to come out. Whatever you do, don't stick a screwdriver there, a heavy one, and try prying against everything because if you damage any of the machine surfaces, the valve is going to stick or you can put a divot in it and it's going to leak. So you have to be patient. Sometimes I'm so patient that I just leave them in. <laughs> one thing to, to remember, that. If you can move it this easy in there, it's probably going to be fine, okay? If it's sticking, well, let's say I depress that and it's stuck there, then that would be an issue. Okay, now, there we go. Oh, see, there's a spacer, which had this thing flown apart, guess what it got lost? Not only the spring, but the spacer. So that's how this goes. And then your valve. And some of the valves are symmetrical. That one's symmetrical. So it wouldn't be hard to... Usually the ones are stepped with different sizes, only going one way, but not always. Usually. This one has a separate housing that comes out. You can see there's a housing within a housing here. And this is where you can get into trouble if you use too much force. Uh, fortunately, this is an aluminum housing, so it can be cleaned up pretty easy. Is there a pocket 
parking alignment for the housing? Or uh, some have it. You always got to pay attention. This one does have a clocking alignment. That's a great question. Yeah, it always has ports or valves, yeah. So you want to take it, uh, Make sure they line up with their corresponding. So this does have a clocking, but only for the, the retaining pin, because the retaining pin has to go through here. Okay. But if you look at the ports, they're pretty much the same. Okay, so you could have it. Oh, that's the pen for it, by the way. Wait, there's more. There we go. You see this goes into there. And this is a very simple valve body, especially compared to that four speed. It's got a lot more little valves, little springs. have solenoids. This aluminum housing is pretty tight coming out, so I'm using the valve and uh, the screwdriver to push it. To, oh, there's a good port. have some obvious clocking situations but fortunately they make it so that the, ins the retaining pin only goes on one side so you can't do it wow. and there's in, more are they in good condition these valves yeah they seem to be all right but you know that that should have just fallen out or fallen out uh, but when you see this kind of witnessing where you can see where it was riding it's always good to polish it because you know any kind of burr or grit will restrict its movement and uh, cause shifting problems and when you start to reduce pressures when you're applying these things under higher pressure they're going to start slipping and letting go and then that just makes everything overheat and fail so we got another one here this is the hardest one if i remember right this one comes out the bottom, as you can see. And it's got a special pin. I'll figure that out. It blows me away. I'm always amazed when I take these apart on who understood hydraulics enough to make those things all different sizes, right? And, and get it. If it was me, I would have said, you don't want an automatic, you want a manual, right? <laughs>
Right, right. The whole thing. You got a different pair of pliers. Right tool always makes a difference, doesn't it? Last one. I hope you notice that I'm trying to keep this oriented the same. Yeah. Otherwise I'm screwed. But I have enough books to try to. Ah, there it is. And this is not hard to get apart, but getting it back in is the fun part on this one. Uh, because there's another valve back here with a spring and to get them all lined up and then you have to push it deep into this passage because the pin's way back here. Mm -hmm. um, that's the hard part. Just barely different size glands, I think. Oh no, those are the same, sorry. Different depths. Cute little valve. That one's cool. And then we got a spring. And the ever elusive unicorn turd. There it is. I think that's it. No valve. That's it. Some assembly required now. <laughs> now in cleaning this, uh, as far as the bores for these valves, do you have a small hole or do you use anything just to spread out as a brake clean? Or? Uh, I usually will put this in a hot parts washer. It's like a jet washer. Uh, so it gets as much of that stuff out, and I'll use like choke cleaner, brake cleaner. Uh, I will polish these, and I will see how they go in. Sometimes, especially on that uh, hydromatic <coughs> transmission, the four-speed, mm -hmm. it's got aluminum housing. So sometimes they get dinged up, and I have to work it. Sometimes I'll get in there with a bearing scraper and take any kind of nicks I might have put in it or any burrs. Uh, it's, it's a painstaking thing sometimes. Sometimes I'll give up and just get a different valve body. But these are pretty pretty good. It's very rare that I've had any real problems. Usually just cleaning up these burrs and getting it all clean and just I usually assemble them in a solvent and I'll put a valve in there and just shake it. And if it goes back and forth by itself, it's I'm happy with it. So there, we're done. Thanks for joining us. You guys get to put it back together. <laughs> <laughs>